So now we've seen three examples of electron configurations. And hopefully you can see by now that the pattern gets very repetitive. Um, the beginning is always the same. It's just you keep going until you run into the element that you're trying to get to. Um, so the ending changes, but the beginning is very repetitive. So you might be wondering, is there a way that you could shorten the electron configurations? Because if the beginning's always the same, do we have to keep writing the same beginning over and over and over again? Like, what if I gave you um, element number 114 and you had to do its electron configuration? It would fill up the whole page, right? So is there a way to shorten this? And there is. So um, how can we shorten those electron configurations? you can do something called the noble gas configuration. And so I'm going to say what you're going to do, and it's not really going to make a thing just yet, but then we'll actually try an example, and then I think it'll make a little more sense. So what we're going to do is write down the closest noble gas before the element and add on the rest. Write down the closest noble gas before the element and add on the rest. What does that mean? Well, when you look at your periodic table, the noble gas that we had you label last time are the column all the way to the right hydrogen, or excuse me, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, those guys. So when I say the closest noble gas before the element, I mean numerically before. So how we were filling an order of atomic number, we're going to find the closest noble gas that happens atomic number-wise just before the element that you're working on. And then we're going to add on the rest. So uh, what does that mean? So if we're doing the noble gas electron configuration, the shortcut for nitrogen, if we're trying to do nitrogen's shortcut electron configuration, the noble gas way, we're going to find the closest noble gas to nitrogen that happens numerically before nitrogen. So nitrogen's number seven here, so nitrogen's two closest noble gases are helium number two and nitrogen number 10. But, or excuse me, helium number two, neon number 10. Neon, though, happens numerically after nitrogen number seven. And so we need to go to helium. So I'm going to write down the symbol for helium and put it in brackets. And then I'm going to add on the rest. So to get to nitrogen from helium, I would have to go to the second row, pass through the S section of seats. I would need both of the seats in the 2S section. And then I would get in the second row to the P section, I need three seats there. That's not much of a shortcut, but nitrogen's pretty early on in the periodic table, so this abbreviation isn't really much of an abbreviation. What if we did sodium, though? So sodium's closest noble gas that happens numerically before sodium. So sodium's number 11. Sodium's two closest noble gases are number 10, neon, and number 18, argon. Well, argon happens numerically after sodium, so I'm going to use the one before. So I'm going to put neon, put it in brackets, and say after neon to get to sodium, what would I do? Well, after number 10, I'd go to seat number 11, which is in the 
S section and I would need one seat. That's a significant chop from when you look at sodium's longer electron configuration from up above, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. We've chopped off quite a bit. What about iron's noble gas configuration? Iron's noble gas configuration, so iron's number 26 right there in the middle. Iron's closest noble gases are number 18, argon, and number 36, krypton. Krypton happens numerically after iron number 26, so we're going to do argon, put it in brackets, and then we'd say after argon to get to iron, what would you do? So we're starting at argon, number 18. If we're at number 18, the next seat we're going to fill is number 19 and 20. So that's the 4S section. We would take both seats in the 4S section. And then to get to iron, 3D6. That's much shorter than the original electron configuration for 